a British inner city hospital, a deadly bacteria has been found in the umbilical cords of newborn babies. It's a superbug found in livestock, particularly pigs, and now it's infecting people. The doctor was a little bit scared when I say I work in pig farm. It can be caught by touching contaminated animals, people or even meat. In an 18-month investigation, The Guardian has gone on the trail of where this new superbug is coming from. We've obtained undercover footage of British pig farms and exposed the conditions where bugs could be breeding. We've conducted independent tests to see whether our supermarkets are selling contaminated meat. Well, these results are pretty shocking. And we reveal how the superbug is already raging in the country supplying much of our pork. It's an epidemic out of control. It's a catastrophe because we don't even have the most basic knowledge of how widespread MRSA is. This is the story of LA MRSA CC398, the animal superbug, and why Britain could be on the brink of an epidemic. A Glasgow hospital. A strain of MRSA linked to livestock has been found in the umbilical cords of two newborn babies. This is not the hospital MRSA with which we are all familiar, but animal MRSA, the latest disturbing twist in the war we're losing against the superbug. Scientists who discovered it have no idea how it got there. All they know is that the bacteria has jumped species and is passed from animals to humans, and that in humans, LA MRSA CC398 is resistant to many antibiotics modern medicine can throw at it. Commonly manifested in the skin, this strain of the animal superbug rarely kills people, but for some, the bug can cause serious and life-threatening infections, including pneumonia and blood poisoning. Its main victims are those who work with pigs. I was filled up with many red spots, with some liquid inside. Almost every single hair was infected. Highly contagious, the superbug can be caught by touching contaminated animals or people. You have contact with people, you shake hands with people. People carry the organism in their nostrils, in their throat, on their hands. The problem with MRSA is actually that the transmission takes place in the community. Many people carry the bacteria without ever becoming ill. The danger is that they can not only infect others, but the superbug can attack them when their own immune systems are low. Although cooking destroys the bacteria, animal MRSA can be caught by handling contaminated raw meat, then touching inside the nostrils or the mouth or a cut. In a major investigation, The Guardian set out to find how this superbug is spreading from pig farms to our meat and to our babies. We like to think that our animals are reared in the fresh air with natural weaning and minimal medication. But our insatiable demand for cheap meat has given rise to a different kind of farming altogether. This is the reality of how some cheap meat is produced. This man has worked on factory farms across Britain for 15 years and has filmed the secretive world of industrial livestock farms. I think if the general public were to, to, to see, you know, exactly how some of these farms are operating, they would be really shocked. Factory farming of pigs is just horrendous, you know. I suppose big ear is dead. That one doesn't look too well. Packed together, often in unsanitary conditions, factory farmed livestock are prone to illness and diseases spread quickly. To combat this, many are given antibiotics, either when sick or to prevent illness. We get cheap food because we can treat endemic disease with antibiotics. We are dependent upon the use of antibiotics to cope with these increased levels of disease. In fact, nearly half of all antibiotics used in the West are not given to people, but to farm animals. To keep production lines tight and meat cheap for consumers, intensively farmed piglets are weaned early so that sows can be impregnated again quickly. But the stress of early weaning can weaken their immune systems and cause diseases, diseases which are treated with antibiotics. 
Although the use of antibiotics as growth promoters to fatten pigs up has been outlawed in the UK, they're still routinely used, sometimes without proper veterinary oversight. The drugs that are used in today's factory farm animals has absolutely shocked me. The scale of it is, is, is astronomical. And we have evidence that the antibiotics being used on some farms include those classified as critical in treating human diseases. Experts warn that using them on animals risks rendering them useless in human medicine. These powerful antibiotics can be bought by anyone, anywhere, at the click of a mouse. These are drugs that are only supposed to be prescribed by a vet in the UK. Yet, as our investigation proved, we received enough drugs to treat an entire pig herd, around 75 animals. This abuse and overuse of antibiotics means many bacteria found in pigs have built up a resistance to the drugs, which in turn has given rise to superbugs like livestock-associated MRSA. This particular type of MRSA is clearly now well established in the UK farms. Despite the growing alarm around this strain of MRSA, the government does not routinely test for the superbug, either in our farms or in our meat. So the Guardian conducted our own independent tests on 100 pork products bought from four major supermarkets. This will be the first time, as far as we're aware, that meat from supermarkets like this has been tested in this way. Before we do these tests, we have no idea which of these products, if any, may contain MRSA or not. The samples were sent by specialist courier to the Technical University of Denmark for analysis. It would take several weeks for the results to come back. Denmark is Europe's largest pork producer and one of the main suppliers of pork to Britain. Danish bacon has long enjoyed a prominent position in Britain and is marketed as a cut above the rest. But that's not Danish. But the pig industry in Denmark is in the grip of a growing epidemic. We're not only the world leading exporters of, of, of pigs, we also export MRSA. An estimated two thirds of Danish piggeries are contaminated with the superbug and cases have tripled in the last five years. It's an epidemic out of control in Denmark. Unlike Britain, the Danish government has been testing for the superbug. According to official figures, as many as 12,000 people are infected, and it's hitting the headlines. In August, blev rekord mange danskere smittet, 127 registreret i alt på bare en måned, og eksperterne kalder nu situationen for en epidemi ude af kontrol. Many farm workers are contaminated. I visited the doctor. They said I I have a MRSA. I was to the doctor because I have some spot on the face. The doctor was a little bit scared when I say I work in pig farm. The doctor told me for eight months to take antibiotics. But if I stop also with the medicine, I will be filled up again on my scalp. I lose a lot of hair. Despite an eight-month course of drugs, the disease shows no sign of abating. That's why I get many very big big spots, like here on my neck, you see. In Denmark, they say that we are talking about 60, maybe 70 percent of the workers have this infection. Kenneth Sorensen was a pig farmer for 12 years before turning whistleblower. He and his wife tested positive for livestock-associated MRSA. I was a little bit in a shock. So I was a little bit, oh, what, what's this? This, uh, this is a new thing, what is it? We was not so worried in the beginning, but we was thinking about it. Doctors reassured Kenneth there was no problem. It was really downplayed, and I can see that now when I think about it. For Kenneth and his partner Carmelia, problems really started at the birth of their first child after the hospital found out the couple were infected with the superbug. Well, there was a big sign, isolated. The nurses put on the mask and cover to co-protect their body against this bacteria. 
they always said, but it's because we need to take care of the other patients that they don't get infected. I have to wear an outfit and mask. We was in isolation and we had our own bathroom and we had a small room as she needed to deliver in. We couldn't leave the room and if we had to, we also have to wash our hands and we couldn't have visitors. Then I asked, why do you need protection against me? That doesn't make any sense, that you tell me it's not a problem for me, but it's a problem for other patients. This is a dramatic situation. It would be a disaster if such an organism is spread uh, in hospital. We have to be careful. It has cost me my job. I don't want to work with infected pigs anymore. The pigs who have MRSA. I want this bacteria to go away from my family. In Britain, our chief medical officer insists that this superbug poses no major health threat. A number of countries do have an issue with livestock-associated MRSA. It can live on the skin. It rarely causes skin infections. Livestock-associated MRSA causes very little problem for humans. Last year, we have uncovered that there are deaths in Denmark. At that time, there were three deaths. Now, the total number are five deaths. Although many people who catch livestock-associated MRSA work with pigs, none of those who died had any connection with pig farms. They had weakened immune systems, and when they were colonized by MRSA, their infection did not respond to antibiotic treatment. Despite these deaths, the Danish pork industry has been accused of trying to hide how many farms are contaminated. Our government has made the mistake from the beginning that they wanted to protect the farmers by silencing the whole problem and trying to not to talk about it. For nearly five years, investigative journalist Niels Molvad has been fighting the pork industry for the right to publicize which farms are infected with MRSA. If we have a list of all the breeding farms and we know uh, which are infected, which are not infected, the authorities and the farmers are forced actually to try to clean up their production lines. To stop the extent of the disease being revealed, the pig industry has attempted to silence Niels by prosecuting him using privacy laws as their weapon. Many farms simply refuse to be tested at all, and the government doesn't force them. Of the 10% of Danish farms that have been tested, over two-thirds were contaminated. We know that we have to reduce our antibiotic use. We have used too many antibiotics for many years. So yes, we should have done, done this uh, sooner and it would have been easier to contain, for instance, the MISA problem if we had done so. The fact is that all countries with a big pig production have this problem. They just don't know exactly how big it is. Recent tests in Denmark showed that one in five of the country's pork products contained the animal superbug. Meanwhile, in the UK, the Food Standards Agency say they have no plans to test our meat routinely as they consider the health risk to be minimal. After five weeks, the results of the Guardian's tests came back from the labs. Well, these results are really significant. We're finding out of our 100 samples sent to the labs, nine have come back positive for MRSA. Eight of these came from Denmark and one was from Ireland. That's a very significant number. This is quite shocking. Four of Britain's most popular supermarkets had infected pork on their shelves. Co-op, Tesco, Sainsbury and Asda. They gave the following statements. The way we're producing our pork is fueling a crisis that's part of a wider problem of antibiotic resistance. There are some organisms, some bacteria, for which we are running out of antibiotics. Antimicrobial resistance is a direct and immediate threat to human health. What we're seeing is more and more bacteria 
are resistant to antibiotics. If this goes on, we will see the end of modern medicine. Indeed, experts predict that by 2050, more people will die of antibiotic-resistant diseases than of cancer. What I would like to see is far greater testing and far more systematic testing. So we need a government that recognises that this is a problem and we agree on an approach that will reduce our dependence on antibiotics. You should be worried about it. You should look at our problems. We should have intervened seven years back when we saw the first cases. Don't think that this is a problem that would solve itself just by closing your eyes. Ultimately, many believe that the solution lies in a return to less industrialized, more natural farming, as better conditions for the animals means less disease and less drugs. Inevitably, consumers will have to pay a higher price for their pork, but surely that's a price worth paying, because right now, cheap meat is costing us too dear.